Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Aged Out Reacts with the two hosts of the Aged Out Podcast, Michael Fantini and Evan Worrell. And as you can see from the video title and probably on the screen now, we're joined again, just like last year, by Rudy Garcia, uh, Blue Devils. What is your actual title, actually? I just realized I don't know it. Uh, I work there. You work there. Okay. <laughs> joined by Rudy Garcia, who works there. It's the job uh, done. At the Blue Devils, yeah. Drum and Bugle Corps. But before we jump into today's video and watching Blue Devils from Finals Night in the Lot, the Drumline, Comment, like, subscribe on the video. Let us know what you think about all of our thoughts and comments here. Uh, share the video with anyone you think might enjoy it. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Never miss an update. Patreon.com or hit the join button here on YouTube if you want to support us financially at all. But we appreciate the viewership no matter what. Uh, yeah, I think I hit it all. How you been, Rudy? It's been like a year. Yeah, I've been good. You know, just kind of hit the ground running when I came back from tour. Um Crew was the normal craziness, you know, ups and downs, swimming pools, and hmm. now I'm back to, back to fall band and eating pineapple every day. There Definitely you go. Ended on a pretty big up for the ensemble, yeah. obviously. Um, bringing yeah. home another championship, can't can't be disappointed with that. Yeah, I mean, again, super fortunate to have the membership that we have um, with, with students every year. It's just continue to blow my mind. Great to work with the staff. You know, it's awesome to work with. You know, some of your closest friends, and you can't ask for a better summer than that. Yeah. So how many summers has it been now that you've been with the Blue Devils? Uh, since 09, I've been with the Devils. So that's that, 9, 10. 14 seasons? 14? Yeah. 13, I guess, if you fix the, the COVID year there. But oh, yeah, you were with point. them. You were with that's them. True. In but, theory, yeah. it would have happened. It would have happened. Yep. But yeah, so today's goals were just just like we did with Mac, Rarick, you know, we're planning to do with a bunch of other people in the game. Just watch the group they taught or arranged with and just talk about it. They can inside share. Inside scoop. Yeah, get the inside scoop on stuff. And so let me switch the scene here and we can jump right into this thing. All right, you both can still see everything? All right. Nope. Feel free to tell me when to pause whenever if you want to jump in with anything. We can talk over stuff and we'll just uh, get going. The cutouts, right? There's a way to start a video. Yep. <laughs> pause. Definitely pause. already going to pause. Um, probably uh, my drum, lights, <laughs> drum line superlative, that's where I was going, would be yep. uh, best bass line of the summer. I don't think... I'm obviously not a, a bass drum connoisseur aficionado, but from my, my perspective, definitely the best bass line of the summer. They were yep. super consistent, like anything we handed them. Like, like I think my only negative was like, I wish they had more moments, like some more <laughs> content. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that whole intro with them, with the quad break, the run, and then that first impact was probably one of my favorite moments of the show. Like like this when the brass comes in and just the how powerful that, that whole opening statement was was really cool to watch every day. I remember it was cool because you all do the the flam exercise competition in the lot. Yeah. And I think we were there. <laughs> semis. It, it was either semis or we were there both days, but I'm pretty sure it was the semis lot. And the bases played, snares played, quads played. And everybody just kind of looked around and was like, yeah, the bases for sure won. Like, the bases won yeah. the semis like, lot. Scott yeah. asked for the applause for the snare line and like <laughs> two people clapped. And the quad line got like five people that clapped and then like they got to the bass line. Very, and it was just like it was the whole crowd. Clear. Yeah, it was obvious. Like the whole battery was great, obviously, but the baseline was just. How much uh, were they all age outs? Tons of Blue Devils experience. Like, what was that like? Uh, well, we had three vets, okay. and so three vets, and I think four, eight, four are aging out. Um, so top three and bottom aged out, and then uh, number four is coming back. It's his age out too. So they all had like like they were just pretty stacked with experience, mm -hmm. and they just and, but. The biggest thing was they played so well together. Like like they were all on the perfect drum. Um, but yeah, that's super, super consistent baseline. Like one just, of those things where it just works early on. Did it did it kind of yeah. click from the beginning of the season? From the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it wasn't oh, like, oh my god, the baseline got good. It was just like, all right. But I, I but I will <laughs> say that freaking flam competition that we always did, like every time we do it and like, yeah, and I'm like, play the exercise. Like <laughs> soloing over the over the whole thing like like we're actually playing the exercise like the snares and quads so i was i was like game i always roasted them on that one 
That's yeah, they awesome. have like that offbeat, just crazy time to <laughs> just in there. Uh, but overall, the, the bat- yeah. overall the whole battery, I guess that was kind of a, a big change from last summer to this summer. Just the experience level going into it was uh, significantly different. Um, just a lot more returning members, a lot more experience. So I'm sure that yeah. was right out of the gate. Just like, oh, we can actually function like a drum core. We know the Blue Devil way. I'm sure that was super beneficial. Yeah, they they took it and ran with it, and we had you know some some really good leadership. Like Laurent, like really stepped in, um, and just had such a greater presence as a leader this year. Like that, it had everybody on board. Dan, or I say Daniel on base, like he was also really good. Like just kind of working together with everybody, making sure everybody was doing the right things. Like like this group really like they worked really well together. That makes a big difference. And we uh, were talking about this in, in Snare Land, at least before we started recording. There were only two rookies, right? Because you were all rookies last season in the Snare Line, at least. And then you had seven of them return. And then two kids from RCC, which obviously are going to be talented. So, Yeah. Yeah, the Snares were, were night and day from last year as far as like experience. And uh, so they were, they were money. Quads were, were pretty fair, all fairly new. With Piety was the only returning vet. Um, but same thing. These guys were like hungry, young, and just, they knew what was expected of them, and they, they they definitely stepped into those roles for sure. Yeah, and absolutely. On the the greenness, if you want to call it that, of the quad line, you said you have three of them back for the next three summers. Yep. Yeah, Kaidi, the center, was the only one who aged <laughs> out, and so the other three are only nineteen or, or eighteen. So they have another. another that three is years. insane. So kudos to yeah. them. I uh, yeah, I was. I was not that good at drumming then. So no, me neither. <laughs> I mean, BD's quad line is always good. So everybody out there, just expect greatness. Not to put pressure on them, but <laughs> they can do it. All right, let's uh, back yeah. up and get that intro one yeah, more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll let's do going. it again and keep rolling. I want to get that bass into the the full battery. Sticks in. Gotta love it. Yeah. No sticks down here. Old school. Good triple roll. Ah. Bass is so all the bass yeah. nuance under all this stuff. Yeah. pause right there again before we get this snare thing uh the thing that always stands out to me with the books too is just the contrast so much between density and then the open space they have all these really tight just short bursts um i would imagine at least as a drummer with experience too just dealing with those types of phrases that getting all those batteries vertical alignment locked in is, is probably a pretty difficult challenge, especially or like in the early part of the season, just like you guys are slow here, which doesn't filter into this quad roll, which doesn't filter back into the snare roll. So just getting those things to, to jive and it layer demands perfection. Forth. There's no easing yourself as a, as a battery into a phrase, having it start kind of less dense and, and, and sparser with notes. It's literally just when it's your turn to play, you start when you're supposed to, and it's so dense that you've just got to be on the train. You can't miss the train. Like it's just, we definitely do a, a a lot of like tempo is a big big thing that we that we're always like working on just making sure they're all approaching because like you said like there's parts where they have to really drive those dense rolls but then it's like immediately hold back on like the following like couple notes you know so it's 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 a lot of like shifting of gears um so whack track tracking like you know get, getting in forms like mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot of, a lot of tempo work for sure it demands individual excellence for sure you're yeah. the only other person outside of like my time at Crown to ever say the word whack track. Is that like a thing you? <laughs> is that your thing? It was a it was a thing that Frank Chapel and myself started doing because we were we were teaching Glassman back in 06 t- together, and it was him and I with the, with the, with the battery a lot and like, I mean, it wasn't wasn't the way we wanted things, but we never had a field. It was like, nope, drum line, you're in the parking lot. Drum line, you're in the parking lot. So we, him and I were like one night just sitting down, like, okay, like how can we clean this in these forms? And so like, like if we're not going to have a field, so then we were like, oh, what if we like just kind of broke them up, didn't stand in sections. So that way each individual has to play their part perfectly. 
and then we can get them in those forms, you know. So that's kind of where it kind of started. It was Frank and I at O six, and then I kind of just took it along everywhere else I went. Yeah, we uh, that was the first time I did it. My two summers at Crown, my first one especially the whack track, and uh, like he said the goal was don't stand next to somebody who plays the same instrument as you so it's just this big block mm -hmm. tracking you can hear your own sound very well uh it forces you to just play with the met because you're not standing next to another snare drummer another quad mm -hmm. drummer another bass drummer yeah and then like when you go back to just a normal track block it's so easy to play clean well much easier i'll say so yeah whack track, whack track. opens up those ears all right, before we jump back in and keep going, I forgot to do this at the beginning. This video oh, yeah. is a Drumline AV video. Shout Link in the description Evan. of the video. Go support that channel. Subscribe. Watch the original video without us yapping over top of it. We appreciate everyone that takes the time and effort to make all these awesome lot videos. So Drumline AV and anybody else we watch. But Evan, thanks for this great BD video. Nairs, let's go. Smooth with the back stick. That was a hell of a rep. Mm. Jesus. Yeah. Dude, a lot in there. A lot of content. Long phrase. Love the isolated cheeses. The beginning of it. Ooh, that little. I don't know what that was. But well, yeah, like well, a... the... Go back. Go back. Go back. <laughs> That's like the 30 second note parable into some diddles. <laughs> but it's like it just comes out of nowhere so this yeah. whole next section is like it's verbatim what we just talked about it's like there's so much open space and groove and it's like and then you have like these short bursts so that was a big challenge because go ahead um, that was a big challenge because at this portion of the show like after that crazy snare break it's like we're like like side two just the battery over here like you know kind of behind the pit and then the horn lines like right on the other side of the field and it's like we come in together and we're like it's just was a side to side nightmare for a little bit mm. and nothing to line up but but again it was like just getting us to be nails in time um just because of that spread it was definitely a challenge all that stuff where you just have to shift from the the back fulcrum and then those short bursts that 30 second up period of, like we just talked about just shifting up to the front of the hands to just pinch and get those rhythms in there and then relax back to the hand it was, it's tough yeah all right, let's get that again. <laughs> Just slaps you in the face. Yeah, yeah, it's super fast. I wrote that part. <laughs> Man, I gotta point something out. They just played a bunch of these in a row, the snare line. The quads might have had it too. Yeah, it. The isolated flam tap without the release, like the f right flam and just a right without the left release. There was yeah. like a bunch of isolated ones in a row. Just chut it, chut it throughout that whole phrase. Yeah. Dude, was that a double spot come through? Here's the moment. All right, before we watch this, we have to ask, was this a brainchild of someone going into the season? Did it develop throughout spring training? Like, was it there the whole time? So Scott came, it was uh, our callback camp in, in January and had this whole thing like thing like kind of drawn out like like he had the whole visual idea um with the role like he had like and the buzz ostinato like he had this idea like like early on like before um so we knew it was going to go on the show somewhere we just weren't sure where and it ended up being uh all this to golf so which was like the war section uh of our show war time i guess is what we uh, ended up calling it um so this whole thing is basically supposed to, to basically it morphed into like tanks rolling into France, like German tanks. Like, it was like kind of like the time period that this this was um, referencing in the show with the De Gaulle speech underneath 
Mm-hmm. So that as they're as they're winding around and with the roll going up and down, it's supposed to be like 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 tanks rolling in, like like coming into town. And then mm-hmm. the next section after this, when the full battery adds in, it's like you know a battle. You know, mm-hmm. so, interesting. Was, I, I remember this was... Was... Go ahead. No, just originally, yes, Scott had this idea, and he, he ended up using it like as an audition kind of piece for um, the snare line. Something they learned, and then like was kind of like a, a little audition. Um, piece for them um, before we set the line. Yeah, I remember when we sampled the drumline early season, and we saw that moment. We're like, man, this is just kind of one of those BD moments. It's going to take them all summer to figure right. out. Um, and obviously, had a couple different iterations. Just what works in the show and on the field and in reality, and getting the moment to craft and sound and feel the way we want it to feel. Um, definitely super challenging with just the dropouts and the add back ends and the individual player responsibility. So, yeah, I yeah. that seemed like Plus, as a player but, stressful yeah. in a lot <laughs> for sure, for sure. And, and it was one of those things where you know sometimes people were getting frustrated, you know, and it was just like, look, like this is one of those moments. Like it's we're going to be take... working this every day. Like you know, yep. and there were tweaks. So a lot of tweaks that went in um, ended up like thinning out a lot of the ostinato stuff on the who's the people that weren't playing the role. Well, because there were buzz um, rolls just, going on underneath the roll earlier on, yeah. earlier on in the season, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was just trying to. I mean, Scott was really trying to create like a different like texture, you know, like a different sound. Um, but it just never got read correctly, and then mm-hmm. it was like, okay, we just it's, it's the roll is the focus. Let's make it that, and and so, but the drill kind of stayed for the most part the same, um, which is just crazy in itself. You know, all those listening chain like the, the oh, roll moving ears around are the changing way changing the whole time. You have to adjust. Yeah every beat pretty much you're in a different environment uh, yeah we said it from the get-go like like evan said like your all's book and this moment in general i think both of us said on that video if if they this is one of those moments that if they make it nails they will probably win a drum trophy because the rest of the show is probably going to be immaculate too and you all came close i mean you were in the top three i think by the end right on the aggregate yeah we ended up in, we ended up in second in drums yeah second. so Almost got there. Like this, we said it, this is one of those moments that it's a statement, and if it's perfect, it, you're gonna get a million times over the credit for it. Yeah, let's watch it. Yeah, I think I went back far enough. We'll just to be. There we go. This should be good. There we go. The rim and high mom texture is really cool underneath the pods of three. Just a left hand shot statement. Oof, just the contrast. Then you add the integration difficulty on top of it. hand speed changes the whole time throughout it too fast shots pause all right that's a that's so- quite a moment so a few things that yeah. stick out to me before we get into this bass thing. First of all, I was laughing because I was just hearing as they were doing the dynamics of that role early on, just the bass hand to hand from one to two. There was just going up and down. I was like, I never noticed that before. <laughs> I had neither. Uh, but I just actually got added. Just... <laughs> we'll, we'll yeah. go back real quick, Mike, and then I'll I'll jump back to just the beginning to or how first... far back is it? Just the beginning of the roll. It stops, but we'll... we'll oh, when they ahead. first go up and down and pulse it up and down? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. At the very beginning. And that actually wasn't in there originally. Like, that, <laughs> that's something that Scott added later. Uh, <laughs> but I was just like, wait, what? Just staying in there the whole time. All right, here we go. One and two. Because <laughs> why not? That's insane. All right. All right. That's so that, yeah. I just want to make sure everybody else kind of caught that too. We'll just enjoy this again one more time. Why not? Yeah, this is, this is a beast. Drop 
the bottom out. The full bass double. It's kind of burst at the top and. Base over top that rim shot roll. Yeah, so that whole Did they say big right bong there, at the end of that. Yeah, there's a story behind that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the um, big bong vocal has a story. Yeah, well, so <laughs> there was this part at, at the high school I teach, Logan High School. Like we had this part at the end of the fall show where it was like this big. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, like that, and they went, and I said something like "Bing Bong" one day, and they were like, oh, "We should." Sing. It's like they loved it, <laughs> and they added it in a couple other spots in the show. But everywhere that they added it, it got taken out because mm. they had to do some kind of body with the band, and they were like really bummed about it. I was like, "Don't worry, guys, I'm gonna put it in the Blue Devil show somewhere." <laughs> so I ended up putting it in that spot, and they were like, "Can we say Bing Bong?" I'm like, "You have to say Bing Bong." Yeah, it's, a, it's it's in the music. It's on the sheets. <laughs> yeah. So. That's that's just a little the backstory about that, but that whole section with that whole thing, like like, I'm like some of the sounds that were created in that, like I I'd never heard anything like that, like that that was a like such a crazy section. Like we first got it, like I was like, what the hell is this? Like, <laughs> and then uh, like we're learning it, and I'm like, we're like, this is so hard. Like it's like like all the different changing power of the rolls, like the dynamics, it's like quads were coming in cold on some of those rolls, like all just like cold attacks coming in while, you know, sections are playing, like like the level of complexity through that whole thing, like just in the, the beats alone was like some of the hardest stuff I've ever had to teach. Like, like it was, just, and then we added the, the visual element, like the changing of the, the forms, listening situations, going into the poltergeist and back out into the block. Like it was just hands down, like, like the difficulty and simultaneous responsibility was nuts, which, which kind of was a little frustrating, you know, because we were not doing well in content. Like, and I'm like, what is happening? Like, what do you mean? Like, okay, sure. We're not as clean as these guys that yeah, we know that, but like, you can, you can literally plug your ears and just watch us do that section and know that we're like the simultaneous responsibility alone. was just like nuts. Yeah. So, hearing, hearing that with the headphones and just hearing the, the dynamic contrast and then like the stereo effect of like the volume like yeah. starting and like pulsating across mm -hmm. the line is pretty it's pretty unique i've never seen another group do stuff like that besides kind of what yeah. bd uh can do i know they've done similar things in some other shows too just with that sound where it kind of ripples left or right almost like you're just panning the audio <laughs> Yeah, it yep. reminded me of, of what they did in 07 when they were snaking through the horn line and playing mm -hmm. the big fiddles yeah, low. Yeah, like yeah. Winged, Victor, yep. Winged Victory Show. Snaking through. Yeah. yeah, but just, I mean, but this one was way more dense than that one. Mm -hmm. There's um, definitely a lot, a, lot of, a lot of meat on the bone, that whole phrase. The only thing I could think of from a content standpoint, Evan and I have speculated and talked about this a ton, that, I mean, obviously it's a tall order for any judge in the heat of the moment to catch everything and, and pick up all the nuances of what's going on at any given moment in a show. And it, one thing I could think of is maybe it's on the fly like that. If you don't know what you're listening for, like there's things like we list, listen to videos and watch that moment throughout the whole summer. And in this watch right now, there were a couple things that I picked up that I hadn't noticed before. So that's the only thing I could think of is that it's just hard to pick all of it up because there's so many little nuances throughout the whole thing, but it, the, the content's it. there. It's undeniable. I'll watch this bass break and then I'll say I'll I'll give another little, little opinion piece on that. <laughs> All right. But let's let's hear it. <laughs> All right, pause. And then we'll go back and rewatch it. So my thing with that is like in the lot you're like nasty. When you see it in the context of the show you're like Damn, they're way far back there, uh, yeah. and they are yeah. projecting like, like nobody's business. But it is, it is far back there, and unfortunately, um, fortunately, we are in Lucas Oil, so we always get 
great performance weather. But unfortunately, mm-hmm. it's not the most friendliest thing for uh, for drum lines, especially bass drums. Um, yeah. So like, man, I couldn't imagine like trying to read that from the front sideline. You're like, sounds pretty good, guys. Yeah, from the front sideline, it is hard, especially with with the uh, you know the pit and the whole soundscape and everything. But up in the box where the GE judges are, you can hear it because mm-hmm. it's we have a sh- we had a shotgun mic on it. Nice. Um, but yeah, unfortunately they're way in the back. But I know, mean, it like, just goes it to sounds show, like you I mean, just advocated for P one P two. There it is, P one P two. Bring it back. But it's it's the reality. I mean, Scott said it when he was on here, and we did our podcast with him about the Blue Devils design to the show, and if that results in the baseline being on the back hash from a show design standpoint, I mean, they don't design the show to win the drum trophy. They don't design the show to win the guard trophy. It's to win the gold medal, have the best show. So, I mean, I said, I told I told Evan that the season we were speculating about how, where the battery was positioned for these moments. And it's like, I'm sure it works amazingly from a GE standpoint and visual standpoint. It's just the way the cookie crumbled kind of for the overall picture to work. And so, but prior to the this bass break was the end of the ballad, and so they they were um, like like putting some props in an, in an area, like they moved some props. But then they also like that was the part where the core started putting on jackets. So from big picture standpoint, like the bass line is the first section you see that that's wearing the jackets. So they come out from behind the the the, the backdrop. So they have it, and then snares and quads, they they're back there putting them on. So it, it, it that feature was actually supposed to be in another spot of the of this drum solo. Like it was supposed to be like quads first, then a pit thing, and then it was like it was kind of layered different. Um, but because of where they were and had to get their jackets on, and I was like, okay, we're putting the space break at the beginning now. But but yeah, like you said, it's like it's it's so big picture. It's not like mm-hmm. we need the basses up front because you gotta hear it. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> the judge like, has no, to read it. Out. It, yeah. I'm sure there are moments too where the you know the judges they want to they want to get out there too so like I'm sure it's like equal opportunity like we wish we could put you up there and we wish you could also come back here but this is what it is so we're gonna we're gonna rock and roll mm-hmm. uh, but we'll back it up and get we'll get that again yeah we'll watch it again the... and we'll let it keep going into there's a it's a short quad and then do a short snare feature right after it I think. Nasty. Mm-hmm. Nice. I'll wait a second. Judges, they always called those tap sixes, and we're like, they're five the sevens. Like, oh, the, 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 I give it yeah, 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 the, da, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, but I knew it was odd, odd, I knew it was an odd number rhythm, like a five or a seven, just the way yep. it felt. Those are inside fives, yeah. right? Yep, 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 the par- parallel fives. But mm-hmm. uh, that whole drum, drum solo was, was pretty challenging because. Well, it was really cool to listen to with, with, the, with the front ensemble because the whole thing starts at 146. And then the battery jumps in, or we all jump into a 219. Like after that snare break, it goes to 219. Um, but the way the pit music is written, like it feels like it stays at the 146. And so what, with them layered behind, there's ramming all those fast notes. It was just such a, such a cool moment to sit back and listen to how it fit in with everything. And we had Mikey, our drum set player, just playing like a nice little backbeat. <laughs> What's the math between 146 and 219? 219 is the quarter note triplet at 146. Quarter note triplet. All right. I was like, that's not how the snare break ends with. Quads coming. I gotcha. Yeah. There it is. So we had a lot of, like... lot, lot of that in the show. Like, uh, like the that whole opening hit, the very beginning thing after that uh, for, first thing we play with the full ensemble, there's a lot of 219 quarter note triplet feet, you know, mm-hmm. and, and like within the horn line while we're at 146. So we kind of use that, that footfall, that modulation uh, quite a bit in the show. Nice. Cool. Well, I have to point out from that moment, and we're going to listen to the whole thing again here in a second, but that short snare moment that has, I think, the fastest left-hand backstick I've ever seen is probably my yep. favorite 
six, it's like 16 bars yeah. or whatever ever length it is, short little snare feature, is probably my favorite snare lick of like the whole summer. Cavi's had yeah. a cool one. Boston had a cool one. But like that little thing, like it's insane. That's the fastest left hand back stick I've ever seen in my life. Fastest yeah. hands in the West. Right. through that too they were pretty spread apart like yeah. they were the snares were in a wide form and even yeah. a lot right there I'll back these up. guys yeah that that whole thing like we didn't do it in the lot we didn't quite have enough room but they were doing like <laughs> pass throughs and it was like it was super nuts visually i just want to point out this, this freeze frame that i happened to land upon yeah. <laughs> nice 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 riley <laughs> pause that real quick <laughs> so we that that part got added like it kind of kind of late well i think we added it somewhere in like san antonio somewhere around there like mid-season and for a while we didn't figure out like lot drill for it yet and so i'm like well let's just not worry about it let's not worry about it and then it was like okay when they kept asking let's do it in the lot let's do it in the lot and i'm like okay fine we'll do it in the lot and then they like didn't want to do it in the lot no oh, parts <laughs> late i'm like like when you guys learn to do it all like all season you've been asking and like now that we're doing it you guys don't want to do it so i, I made them do it like nope we're doing it you, you made your bed in, you're lean gonna, into it yeah you made your bed you're gonna sleep in it now yeah play your quarter notes exactly <laughs> it's in the show Capitulation of the beginning break. Those are so hard. I love those rhythms. Those are so <laughs> hard. But, like, that's such a huge juxtaposition of the hand pressure from what was coming before that. said don't be he's calling ticks he's still teching a month later yeah. after the season's over <laughs> reset that's awesome reset. yeah so, so that, yeah that whole ending was just i mean it, that changed so much like we always are like constantly tweaking the ending of our shows but that, like, i mean that that part of the show it's like okay this is easy this is drum corps like you're just marching we're in a line like we're not like running around and you know poltergeist and all body stuff like it was just like okay straightforward so when you say poltergeist, do you mean just like an integrated form? Uh, it's, yeah, it's what we talk, call it when it's like snares in between okay. quads. Like, that's, what we, that's what Scott calls it. So, Gotcha. Poltergeist. <laughs> I, I wonder, in that last I wonder phrase, how he came up with that poltergeist. Yeah, there's got to be a story behind that term somewhere. Uh, but throughout that phrase, too, you can hear it. And you can hear it in a lot of past years of the Blue Devils drumline and the writing and stuff. It's just a lot of groups will just play a triplet role. You guys will, a lot of times, if it's the right tempo, just make it a seven or like an eighth note five roll or something. And it's it's such a subtle difference that if you're not listening for it, there were a QU eighth note five rolls in there. I think that a lot of groups just would have played triplet rolls. But, you know, we're going to add a little a, a little extra layer or element of difficulty and just downshift a little bit or upshift a little bit. And it's just really, really, I feel like that's like the, just Blue Devils to me is just nuanced difficulty. 
Just a lot of cool stuff going on that takes like some drumming IQ to pick up on a little bit, but it's just really effective and cool. Yeah, I, I mean, Blyde and Scott, like they really, I mean, this variety, like this, like 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 the extremes of heights, and then just the variety of rhythms and mm-hmm. space and density. Like it's 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 got, definitely got a, a little bit of everything for sure. So when you guys are like first getting your version of Dave's book to are there, does he send it out? Like, all right, this is what we're got. This is kind of the starting point. Send me back notes, blah, blah, blah. Things we want to maybe do differently from a rhythmic standpoint, a sticking standpoint. These things are like non-negotiable at this point. We'll maybe change them later. Like what's that kind of beginning process look like when you get it from him? Yeah. Initially it starts like glide. I'll have a version Scott, I'll give it a once through, add his things. You know, there, there's there's definitely sections where Glide will be like, you know, take the lead on this part. And um, there are a few, a few things that Glide will be like, we have to play this phrase, you know, because it's going to work with what the horn line's doing. Because because uh, he comes up with kind of the whole music package besides the front ensemble. Like he initially has like the brass stuff. And, um, and so when he sends the drum stuff, the battery stuff to Scott, Scott will give it a once over. And then he sends it to us. But there will be um parts like if there's like a quad feature scott could be like okay this is kind of the idea like do something with it you know what i mean like or you know body wise we want to do something like this like what like what do you got like like it's it's definitely like it kind of trickles down um, so does the front stuff get written last yes i believe interesting i think once the horn stuff and battery stuff is is pretty nailed down then and dinkle starts to get that going and Evan, correct me if I'm wrong here. I feel like that's a unique approach. I feel like uh, most people, you get the horn in the front book there, and then the battery book is the last part as like the sprinkles on top of the Sunday that's added in. I think it just depends on what the the focus of the moment is. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I would say typically, if you're especially if you're talking about like high school band, well, yeah, for the sure. Horns in in that front, realm. The horns in front ensemble stuff get written first if it's not the same person doing the front and battery. Um, and then I would say typically too, probably once Brian does some stuff, then they kind of go back and like, all right, for like auxiliary percussion lineup, battery moments and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of back and forth <laughs> for sure. For sure. A lot of conversation going on, but yeah, you all were playing some wild stuff this summer. Just to reiterate something yeah. we said earlier, we said that if, you, if this book gets there, like fully gets there, they will win the Sanford and it got real close. It almost happened. Just so happened the Cavaliers had a phenomenal summer and it is what it is, but you guys still got it amazed so close to the mountaintop like it was incredible with how difficult everything was. Just the level of quality at the end was awesome. Yeah, I was I'm really happy for Macintosh, man. He's been he's been grinding over there. So I was really happy to see see him get that success for sure. Like he's he's a good friend. I like that guy. So it's, Max, it's fun Max a cool dude. They've got a it good was fun team. hanging out, hanging out with them during finals week. Yeah. Yep. Heck yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, you got some bass openings, so everybody wants to audition for bass drum. Come on yep. out. Uh, <laughs> how many? So yeah, how many age outs did each of the three subsections have? Uh, bass drums had four. So four um, bass spots, quads, everybody. It's quads. We have two spots. I think we're gonna try to go five. Um, and then snares, I think we have quite a few spots. I think we have, I think we have six spots. Oh, wow. There were that many age outs. Yeah. Cause Riley aged out Jacob, Koji, Laurent, Becca, um, Bima. Yeah. Six age outs. All right, everybody. So two quad spots, six snare spots, and four base spots. If you want to march the Blue Devils, this is the summer to go audition. Send your tape Unless in you or buy some snares. plane tickets. I don't think – has BD ever gone 10 since, like, 88? Since, like, 80 to I don't think early so. 80s? Maybe. Not in recent drum corps history, recent, for sure. I don't think so. They're like, we don't like writing drill for that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my first two years in the core, we had seven snares. Seven, seven is seven. Maybe not, maybe not, Maybe not the second year, but first year for sure we had seven snares. What was that year? Ninety seven. Ninety seven. Okay, that's that's what I thought. There's nothing yeah. wrong with going seven in my opinion. You'll I be way cleaner. A seven man snare line one year. 
was that wasn't injuries, intentional but, though. <laughs> it was due to injuries, but yeah, that wasn't the intent from the get go. But started with nine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that summer was a roller coaster. I heard all about that as it was happening. Yeah, all right, well, that's a whole different anyway. story. But either of you all have anything else you want to talk about related to the summer? Anything the else? Blue you Devils want to throw and. Out? Uh, top of my head now. Yeah, this was this has been a fun. It it's a- been forty minutes already. Time flies when you're having fun. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> then we'll wrap this up. So, Rudy, always a blast. I'm sure we'll do this again next season, hopefully. And uh, everybody else, thanks for hanging out. Comment, like, subscribe again. Go subscribe to Drumline AV's channel. Check out the raw video footage over there. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Patreon.com, or join here on YouTube for financial support. And as an aside to this, uh, we put something out on our Instagram. We will be doing like T-shirts and logo stickers soon. We're already in talks with a company to make that happen. So. Definitely go follow on Instagram if you're interested in getting a t-shirt or sticker or, any, or anything for your drum pad, laptop, whatever. Uh, yeah, so we will see everybody in the next video. Peace.